Welcome back, everybody. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, gift number one, apologizing. Uh, now we're down for gift number two. And for gift number two, it may be confusing, but it's confirmation. That's right. Gift number two is confirmation. Understanding why we do something. Verifying that's what we should do. So the general, the general purpose of this uh, reformation or, or this uh, gift giving is so that we can be ready to go before it's time to go. And I know most of us have heard about, you know, Christ's second coming, going to heaven and so forth. And, you know, we look for the day. Oh, if we see the clouds split, uh, I can hurry up and get this over and say, Lord, forgive me. And then I'll be ready to go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nah, it don't work that way. Sorry. Sorry to let you know. Actually, I'm glad to let you know. We can't have a life saying that I'm going to live the way I want to live. And then right before he cracks the skies, uh, I'm going to say, Lord, forgive me. And he's forgiven me in my sins. No. It, one, and you're going to look at me funny when I say this, heaven would be seriously boring. Yeah, you wouldn't like it at all. You know, um, I was talking to a friend of mine. This is before we get into I, I, I just got to share it with you. And, um, you know, uh, we don't eat unclean meats. The Lord says don't eat the unclean meat. That's a whole other Bible study. We can get into that later. No doubt. Make your comments. But, you know, I was telling him, I said, truth be told, ain't going to be no clean meat eating in heaven. Ain't going to be no fried chicken, no salmon, no steak, none of that. And he looked at me while he was eating some chicken like, hmm? I said, we ain't going to be killing things in heaven. We're getting back to the original diet. Fruit off the tree, vegetables from the ground, nuts, grains. That's what we're going to be eating. We ain't gonna be, meat eating really came after the flood was gone. Just a little, hey, don't get mad at me. I know you enjoyed. I hope you had some of the bonus gift. I hope you made some of the bonus gift and you enjoyed it. Um, and maybe there might be a bonus gift today. You don't know. Just stay on and we'll see about that. But I know you got your Bibles. Come with me. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 22. That's right, we're looking at Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to look at verse 10 through 12. And it says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the prophecies, I'm sorry, he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Here is Christ letting us know that the decision will be made before he comes to get us. Now, we don't know. We don't know when he's coming, so we definitely don't know when the decision will be made. Yeah, I, I paused on purpose for that. Because that's serious. We don't know when the forgiveness of sins will be done away with. I'm being real slow when I say this because we just read the scripture. He says that the filthy be filthy still. And then what it said, let the unjust be unjust still. Now prayerfully, he hasn't come to that point now. So if you're filthy, if you're unjust, you still got time. I still got time because there's things. I'm coming to you, Lord, I, Lord, none of your business. But, Lord, you know I need some help with some things. Help me get straight. Let me grow. Because there are things that I used to do in the past 
guess what? I don't do no more. All right, we're going to get to that later. But right now, I want us to confirm that you can't wait until Christ comes in to try to say, hey, Lord, I'm down with you, because it's not going to work that way. We've read the scripture near the end of the Bible, the last chapter in the Bible, and it clearly states that Christ is going to shut the books. If you're righteous, if you're on my side, you're going to stay that way. If you're not on my side, unfortunate for you, I've been calling, I've been knocking at your door, I've been on, I've been sending you text messages, uh, Instagram pictures and wording and whatever. It's over. Do you. So that means, being as though we don't know, we have to live a life of confirmation. That's right. Now look with me. We're going to stick in Revelation a little bit today because I want to get some things cleared up. Now, turn with me to Revelation chapter 7. That's right, Revelation chapter 7. And yes, now, in Revelation, it is a prophetic book, and it's deep. It got prophecies here and there. Time, prophecies of, of the same time, but shown different ways. And when you look at Revelation with Daniel, Man, that's a whole, whole semester long study. And indeed, we'll get into it. But right now, I'm just trying to get your attention for you to be prepared. Looking at verse 2 of Revelation chapter 7, it says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Now, if you don't know what the seal is, back in the day, when they would send uh, envelopes or mail to ensure that it stayed closed until the person who needed it got it, they would use the wax and put the, the seal on it, you know, because you, you know, the king was important. You, know, you just put the, you know, uh, we don't even mail anymore, so we, we don't even do that. But that's the purpose of the seal. It's to ensure that this person stays the way they are. Didn't we just read that? He said the filthy. The... So he's like, I want, I want, or well, we even got there yet. Having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have done what? Till we've sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I want to be sealed. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to have God seal. Right here in my forehead. Now, this isn't talking about a physical seal. Okay? And before we get into it, I got to show you something. Else. I got I to gotta bring the text and then we're going to get into it. Okay? Because we're talking about the gift of confirmation. So here we already seen something that will confirm who God's people are. It's the seal of the living God. All right. Now, turn with me to Revelation chapter 13. All right? We're not getting... Really, really deep into all the prophecies today. I'm showing you the points here, the important points, because this is an important gift. All right. This is an important gift. Looking at Revelation uh, 13, looking at verses 16 through 17, it says, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark, not a seal, a mark in their right hand on their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So this is not talking about God. We see that God has a seal. And it's only placed, the seal of God is not placed in your hands, chest or feet. The seal of God was placed in the forehead. The mark of the beast was placed in the hand or the forehead. All right, now we can get to some explaining. Let's, let, let's go. Now, the reason why God's seal can only be placed in the forehead because the seal showing that you have confirmed God as your Lord and Savior, you have confirmed Christ as your Lord and Savior, has to happen up here. It cannot happen only through your actions. That's right. You can't say, well, I came to church uh, three days out of, uh, three Sabbaths out of the month, so I'm good. No, 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 no. No, no. It doesn't work that way. 
You have to make the decision in your mind that God is, I'm pausing here, because somebody knocked at the door. God, somebody knocked at the door. You can just keep recording. Yes, I asked them, but in the mind, because the only way we accept God is by accepting him in the mind. Now, here's the thing. When we accept Christ in our mind and we are given Christ control of our thoughts and who we are and in our decision making, that will control our actions. All right, you see where I'm going? You see where I'm going? When we have the seal of the living God, the confirmity that we are on God's heart, Christ is my Lord and Savior, I want to have his character, I want to be like him. I, when you have that in your mind, accepting Christ, that will control your actions. Now, here's the thing. Dealing with the devil, dealing with sin, we might do sins solely out of actions. We might say, yeah, I accept God, but your actions are different. You might, people might say, or one could say, yeah, you know, I'm not no sinner, but they hold on to their sin. And unfortunately, a lot of times what many of us will do, and I said us, yes, I said us, is that we won't confirm our actions as being something that's sinful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We have to, even though we love the thing, even though it's, it's oh, it's innocent, ain't nobody getting hurt, it's okay, no, not in the eyes of God, no, nope. mm-mm. This is confirming whose side we are on. And of course, yes, we can take the, the life of sin in our minds and say, it is what it is, and this is how I'm rolling. Now, I'm going to be bluntly. Unfortunately, many people have left the church with that kind of mindset. I'm free. I can do what I want. I can live how I want. I can eat what I want. And I can dress how I want. I can think how I want. That's a mark of the beast in the forehead. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to let you know that we still have time. Prayerfully, we still have time. So God, and we need to confirm which one we're going to take because that makes a decision for the angel to say, mm, I'm going to keep this one holy. Or, 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 or I can't keep you holy because you hold on to the mark. And when we stay or when we choose to be in that, whichever one we choose to be into, I want to be in the righteous. When Christ says, let the righteous remain righteous still. Lord knows I ain't trying to be one of those where he say, let the filthy be filthy still. You see why that gift one was so important now? Amen, amen. Now let's go on, let's go on because I got to let you know this is just not my thoughts. I know I'm coming a little different, but you need to know, hey, these are gifts. When we have a life of confirmation, this is a gift that will help us move on. Look at it, looking, looking at uh, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter three. Now I'm looking at verses two through five. It says, beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. That's right. I don't know about you. I ain't left planet Earth. I ain't been to heaven. We don't have the concept of what life in the in the in the heaven of God, in the throne room of God. We don't understand how that's going to be. This is what he's talking about. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that have this hope in him purify of himself even as he is pure. 
having that mindset that I want to be just like Christ. Because if that's what we want to live with for eternity, that should be our thought process. That should be how we're making decisions today. That is what allows us to to enjoy that first gift we talked about yesterday of apologizing and forgiving because I want to be like him. Verse four says, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Why? Because sin is the transgression of the law. Now, this is very important. You know, a lot of people when we talk about, especially when it comes to the Sabbath, you know, the law is done away with. Well, this text makes it very clear. Uh, the only reason there is sin is because there is a law. Because if there is no law, then there can be no sin. And I'll say that again. The text says, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Why? For sin is is the transgression of the law. So if we say that sin is done away with, I mean, if we say that the law is done away with, well, that means sin is done away with. Doesn't make sense, does it? That's how Satan rolls. He be trying to confuse people. He wants you to think, yes, you can live a sinful life. It's all good. Christ died. It's all right. Go on. Your sins are covered. You remember he died on the cross? Yeah. That's a lot of people. I just got to be straightforward because we can't live that kind of life. I'm here encouraging all of us to say, hey, it's sin. It's against God's law. I got to let it go. We have to walk this life of confirming who we're walking with. Confirmation. Let's finish reading verse five. And you know that he was manifested to do what? Take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Now, we know good and well, God didn't take away the sins by taking away in the law. No, 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 no. His death took away our sins, and we are called to live like him so that we what? Don't sin no more. Now, I can't go before. I can't tell you what tomorrow's gift is going to be about. But if you read this text, I'm telling you, you can get an understanding of what tomorrow's gift is going to be about. But nonetheless, what we are being called in confirmation and to confirm who we stand for. Do you stand for sin? Do you stand for Christ? Do you stand for holiness or do you stand for sinfulness? Where is it that you stand? And quite frankly, you know what? There's a text that I didn't put in, but it's something we got to read. It's something that we got to read. And, and if my memory helps me, uh, I, I believe it's Revelation chapter 3, I believe. If, if I believe it is, it is Revelation chapter 3, and we are going to look at verse... Uh, 14, Revelation, chapter 3, verse 14. Because you may be saying, Rich, I hear you. We got to confirm. Yeah, but I just live how I live, man. Well, look at what it says. Look at that verse 14. It says, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. I'm going to pause right there. This is real. This is 100%. God is saying, I would much rather you be a sinner than lukewarm. Yeah, I ain't get to the verse. You read it. It's there. He says, because you're not cold, you're not hot, you're lukewarm, I spew you out of my mouth. God is saying, confirm what you're going to be. Confirm if you're going to be my child, if you're going to live in my way, confirm it. Or if you want to be a sinner, go right ahead. 
Be a sinner. I can deal with you being a sinner. But when you want to be lukewarm, when you want to be a, 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 a Christian, you know, when you go to church, but on Saturday night, Friday night, you bout it, bout it. You want to be a Christian when, when your bills can't get paid, when you don't make enough money. But you're going to live live when you get a bonus or you get a raise. You see where I'm going with this? Because sometimes some, of, some people, I can't say some of us, at least I don't do this, only pray when we ain't got something. When, we, when we're in struggling, oh, man, Lord, please, I'm on my knees every night. Yeah, help me, help me, Lord. But when things are good, you don't even know what a prayer is. Be lucky if you can say your grace. And what I'm telling you is I'm not, I'm not condemning you. I'm not coming down on you. I'm just being 100% with you. God says choose where you want to be. Do you want to be hot or you want to be cold? Now, I'm not going into which one is a Christian and which one isn't a Christian. You know, is it the cold person is a Christian or is it the hot person? No, no. God just saying he's being blunt. Choose which life you want to live. Because God says, I'll hook you up. I'll, I'll let you choose the life you want to live. You don't want me around. You don't want, you don't want my ways. You don't want my love. You don't want my concern. Fine. Go do you. You know, God is, is respecting like that. That's awesome that, that God would be like, just do you. But if you want my ways, if you want to be my, my child, if you, if you want to live eternally with me, if you want to be an eternal vegetarian, yeah, I said it, not even a vegetarian, a vegan. Amen. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. I'm sorry. Y'all pray for me because I need it too. I need your prayer. But if he says, if that's what you want to do, confirm it. Confirm which life you want to live and so that I can bless you, so that I can seal you. Because if I don't seal you, you're going to get a mark. And no one wants to mark. No one wants to mark. So the last portion of this gift is found in Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. If you don't have it, I know it's right here on the screen. Looking at verse 13 through 14. Brethren and sisters, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Press toward the mark. So that one, the angels can seal you with the seal of God. And that when Christ says, he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. You is in that group. Confirmation, a wonderful gift. Hey, thank you so much, Elder Thomas. Uh, you know, I believe that this is such an amazing opportunity for us all to take, uh, even today. Uh, one of the things that I've been finding uh, in my life and also in my time in ministry is that um, it's so easy for us as individuals uh, to stay in this middle space. Uh, where you're not necessarily on or off, where you're not necessarily cold or hot, uh, but you're lukewarm, you know? Um, and I believe that as a result of that, we oftentimes waste time. Uh, however, this reminds me of a story that you actually mentioned, the prodigal son, uh, where, you know, the son actually went out. And see, I believe that it takes courage to do what the younger son did. He, he went out. Although uh, it wasn't the best decision for him, uh, he decided to leave. And it wasn't a, uh, should I do this should I, or should I not? We, it, we see that he made this decision uh, to just go. As opposed to the eldest son, the older son, uh, who stayed there and he resented his father and he was upset uh, despite the fact that he stayed. And what we see is that while the younger son did leave, 
and that the younger son did uh, waste his father's funds and things like that, he ultimately came back. As opposed to the elder son, who while he was still home, uh, his heart was never in the right place. And we see that at the end of the story, that he too needed to be corrected in a sense. And so I believe that it's important for us to be able to confirm uh, whether we will follow God, whether we will accept this gift that God has in store for us. Uh, because I believe that when we do that, I believe we set ourselves up to receive all that God has in store for us. So I just want to invite you to confirm today and receive the gift that God has in store for us. For our second gift of the week, what do we have today? Uh, today we have Siplog. You've heard of eggnog, yes. but some of us who no longer um, consume eggs, we do this Siplog that's made with with nuts instead of eggs. And it usually they have it at Christmas time. It doesn't have to be Christmas time to have a good snack, in my opinion. So this drink is awesome. So this silk nog is made with cashews and dates and plant milk and some turmeric. Now I wanna tell you a little bit about the turmeric. It acts as a blood thinner and it should be avoided if you have bleeding disorder. Don't take too much of that. Also, it, it may interact negatively with your medications, including your blood thinners, your antidepressants or your antibiotics or your antihistamines. And if you're also on cardiac medications, be careful of turmeric. Don't take so much. It could interfere with your diabetic medications also. But other than that, you just, the, the recipe is very, very easy and very quick. Use your glass. You know, we, we tend to put these stem glasses for, for guests on special occasions. You are a special occasion every time you eat with your family. So use your glass. Have a good time making this drink. You're just going to blend everything together. It's self-explanatory. And just have a good time with this drink. Any, any day is a special day when you make this drink. All right? Make it. All right. Let's see how we make it. Thank you for your gift. I'm looking forward to get some of this. So, I mean, the holidays are coming. The perfect holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, where it's time for eggnog and something I used to drink, but I no longer drink it before I became a vegetarian because I found out, <laughs> didn't even think about it, that it had raw eggs in there and I don't, I didn't like that. So I stopped drinking it and then I hadn't had it for a while and then I decided to start playing around with some recipes and make a vegan version. So in here, I have a half a cup of soaked cashews, eight dates, pitted dates for the sweetener. I'm gonna put in four cups of Milk, the milk, this is almond milk, but the milk I normally use is the very vanilla soy, silk soy. It's purple, I couldn't find it, but I found this one, it's a hint of honey, um, almond breeze, which is just as good. So that's in here, so four cups of milk, eight dates, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a little bit of salt. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in. A teaspoon of vanilla. And this vanilla is the no alcohol vanilla. It's alcohol free, double strength. I'm going to grate her a little bit of nutmeg in here. Nutmeg. A dash of pumpkin spice. Just a dash. Pumpkin spice and a tablespoon of olive oil to help with the viscosity. And if you wanted ice, you could put ice in there. So I'm gonna let this run while I check back. Okay, so it's all blended up. Now, if I wanted to, because you know the real eggnog has a little bit of orangish color that comes from the color of the yolk, we can put a little bit of turmeric which is healthier in the back in the mix which i'm gonna do just a pinch turmeric is very good for you for 
inflammation it helps to protect the body i'm going to just whiz this a little bit put more if you want really yellow and in my glass I have a little bit of nutmeg already I'm gonna pour that in here and then I'm going to put a dash of nutmeg on the top of, of pumpkin spice on top of also so this is my version of this eggnog, the silk nog. If you want to make it thicker, even thicker, you could add more cashew nuts to that.